Chapter Twenty Three of Nan Sherwood at Lakeview Hall. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Nan Sherwood at Lakeview Hall by Annie Rowe Carr. Chapter Twenty Three: A Strange Adventure it seemed awfully funny nan went about with sealed lips save when she had to ask a question of a neighbor in study hour or in class even in room seven corridor four there was silence bess was at first amused then disgusted then indignant why whoever heard the like she cried not to speak goodness why i never had so many things to say to you in my life before and you sit as dumb as one of those japanese monkeys and she pointed to the tiny hear no evil see no evil speak no evil group on nan's bookshelf at first nan only smiled at her chum's impatience but soon she found it necessary to steal off by herself during recreation time the temptation to speak was too great nor did bess try to make it easier for nan to keep strictly to the line of punishment that had been inflicted upon her by dr bella prescott bess began to take a wicked delight in catching her off guard and getting a word past nan's lips before she thought oh bah cried the careless bess what does it matter we're in our own room Dr. Bella knows very well you won't stick to the letter of her command. Nan felt differently about it. The principal had trusted her to keep her lips sealed during recreation hours, and she tried as much as possible to keep by herself. Solitary recreation hours for a week. That was Dr. Prescott's command, and Nan did her best to keep away from her fellow pupils. One afternoon between her last recitation for the day and supper time she went down to mrs cupp with her arms full of summer clothing for permission to put the fox away in her trunk here's your key and the key to the trunk room i trust the latter to you nancy because i see you are a girl of honor mrs cupp said rather kindly for her i see you're trying to obey Obey the doctor's instructions regarding your recreation time you may stay down there till the supper bell rings if you like but remember if you wish to bring anything up with you from your trunk you must show it to me yes mrs cupp replied nan soberly this was not the first time she had asked permission to go to her trunk and she had always chosen a time when no other girls were around and she could be alone in the trunk room she went downstairs rather thoughtfully now mrs cupp believed she was a girl of honor nan was wondering if after all she came up to the requirements for such a person i am not being entirely truthful right now she thought i don't need to go down cellar with these things i have plenty of room for them in my clothes closet I am going to my trunk for an entirely different reason. I wonder, pursued Nan Sherwood reflectively, if all girls are like that. Are we naturally untruthful about little things? Do I know a perfectly frank girl in all this school? Goodness, nobody but poor Amelia Boggs, and she is half cracked, the other girls say. That's why I like Walter declared nan to herself i guess that is why i like cousin tom and even rafe it's sometimes ugly to speak the brutal truth i know but it is never dishonorable now i am deliberately acting deceitfully because i did not tell mrs cupp all my reason for coming down here such abstract questions as this often troubled nan sherwood she never discussed them with her chum or with anybody else now but she often wished she could talk them over with her mother as she used to do mumsey 
always saw everything so clearly and always knew just the right and wrong of things and it's so hard sometimes nan murmured to tell what is right and what is wrong she snapped on the electric light nearest her trunk the receptacles were in rows each with a card on which the owner's name was clearly written nan's was in a corner at the end of the main building nearest the unfinished part she had come down a passage from the stairway to get to the trunk room this part of the cellar was a long way from the kitchen and scullery some of the girls were afraid to come to the trunk room alone although their imagination had not yet peopled this part of the hall with ghosts nan thought of nothing when she had raised the lid of her trunk but one thing she carefully put aside the empty trays and the layers of clothing hiding the long box at the bottom of the trunk it was locked with a little brass padlock tom sherwood had made the box very neatly and nobody could possibly open the receptacle without the key unless the box were broken nan wore the tiny key in a little leather bag on a chain of fine gold links which had been her mother's when she was a little girl in memphis nan quickly unlocked the box and raised the cover a rush of sweet-smelling herb odors burst forth it was the combined owner of the tamarack swamp of upper michigan or it seemed where nan had spent the past summer she lifted aside the covering of tissue paper and revealed a great pink-cheeked blue-eyed beautiful doll it was as large as a real baby and it was dressed elegantly nan's mother with her own frail hands had made all the garments beautiful beulah wore beulah dear murmured nan hugging the doll up tight to her bosom and rocking herself to and fro as she sat upon the floor it's just like going home again to see you wouldn't you like to see our dear little room in the dwelling in amity if only we could fly back there really only for just an hour and have mumsey and papa sherwood at home too and all be together again nan choked up at this and the tears began to flow but she crowded them back in a moment oh this will never do this will never do she cried under her breath i'll only make you feel bad too my dear darling beautiful beulah and goodness me added nan sherwood suddenly becoming practical what would dr beulah think if she hurt me she would perhaps think i had named you after her I'm not sure that a principal of a great school like this would want to be a godmother to a doll. I don't care. I guess that's why I love her so much, because she bears the same name as you, dear, and you love her too, if you could know her. Oh, dear, I wonder if I did wrong in hiding you down here in the bottom of my trunk. Mrs. Cupp certainly wouldn't have taken you away from me, the girls might have made fun and bess i suppose would have been difficult but i have felt better to have you upstairs in number seven corridor four a step in the passage outside the open trunk room door nan rose up in a panic clutching beulah to her breast somebody was coming there was not time to put the doll back into her nest and successfully hide her the wall at the end of the cellar was of heavy planking. A pile of empty dry goods cases stood at hand, a narrow alley having been left between the tiers of boxes and the plank wall. Nan darted behind the screen of boxes, the doll in her arms. She slipped on something in the dark passage and was flung with considerable force against the plank partition. To her amazement and alarm, a narrow section of the partition moved out, dropping downward and outward from the top, as though it were hinged at the bottom. This narrow door was weighted, so it could not fall abruptly. Nan was flung sprawling upon it, and lay there with her doll, 
as the shutter dropped quietly to a horizontal position she knew she lay over some deep cistern or the like and that the plank door bridged it it was pitch dark behind the partition and a sour damp smell like the odor of an old brewing cellar rose to her nostrils nan sherwood startled as she was uttered no outcry end of chapter twenty three recording by lindarie nielsen vancouver b c